Hey everyone, welcome back to my garden. And today we got a one week update with the hydroponic cucumelon plant, also known as the moss melon plant. If you've been following this growth and watching these episodes, you're able to see how fast this plant is growing. And it's filled in this entire tre- this entire trellis. And if you remember from last week, this thing did not look like this at all. The leaves are nice and broad. The fruits are getting nice and big. Let me show you an example. Here we have a beautiful, nice little fat guy right there. Here's another one. Let me just take you down below and really show you a nice view. I like to come in here every morning look from below and see all of these nice little cucumbers growing I mean how beautiful is this and these tiny little yellow flowers are so cute I'm sure the bees would have loved this but being that we're growing indoors I guess I'm the hungriest bee of all because I've been pollinating all of these by hand. And let me show you an example of how I've been pollinating in case you haven't seen that. If you see here, here's an example of what the male flowers look like. From last week, these have grown quite a bit and they were hard to see last week and now they're, you could actually see the colors on it. It's nice green, has a little white tip with five points, like a little beautiful star. And let me just pick that off and show you what the pollen looks like and what I do basically. So when I pick it off, you have the nice little front side, that's where the pollen will come out of. And when you squeeze it, you seen that? The yellow pollen comes out and that's what you take over to the female flower and you, you just put a red into the middle you want to make sure you get that in there and I like to leave the flower in there just in case to make sure the maximum amount of pollen gets released and just to assure success and I mean I think the results truly speak for themselves I haven't really lost any flowers besides a couple from manhandling this plant when I have to come in here it's a really small distance from the light to the trellis it's only three inches I've kept it the same distance this entire growth of its life so when I have to come in here and adjust these vines that are just going nuts all over the place I mean look one here one here there's another one here's another one I just don't know what to do with these things I, I have to come in and just push it back down under there it doesn't even matter. Before, I was very methodical and I made sure things went the way I wanted. Now, it's completely filled in. <laughs> I just got to get that thing back down because it gets awfully close to the light. Every morning I come in, it's one inch from the light and I have to keep coming in and adjusting everything. And I'm growing this indoors in a tiny little greenhouse here using a 24 inch high output for less than what? T5 light with four light bulbs. It's about, tw I think it's 24 watts each light bulb. So it doesn't use that much electricity. I barely even notice a difference in my electric bill, to be honest with you. And I have one, two, three of them running. And I would say my electric bill maybe changed five to ten dollars a month, maybe if even. So it doesn't require a lot of electricity to run this if you want to grow indoors and you're not able to grow outdoors or you don't have the space or it's winter time like it is here currently at the moment. I'm in zone 6b so it's not ready for outdoors at the, yet but that's perfectly fine. I actually really enjoy growing indoors. I think I prefer it to outdoors at, right, at least right now. 
I like controlling everything, minimizing the risk of aphids. If you've seen my earlier video from a few days ago, the apple tree as well as the strawberry roots got infested. The strawberry roots came from outdoors and they were close to the apple tree. So that's why the apple tree got infested. It was grown from seed. Normally when things are grown from seed, it doesn't really have much of a risk of aphids in my experience. And if you see what the levels of nutrients look like, if you remember last week I showed you, it was around 500 milliliters. And by the next day, that was on Saturday, by Sunday, it basically drank almost everything up. And by Sunday night, I ended up having to refill it back up to 1500 milliliters. And the way I refilled this thing was very difficult. I ended up just taking an extra container that I filled up with my hydroponic nutrient fertilizer. And I'm using right now, being that it's in flowering stage, a mixture of master blend 41838, three grams, calcium nitrate, three grams, and Epsom salt, I use uh, two grams. Now, you've seen from my earlier videos, I was using a different ratio before. Being that the plant is in flowering stage, that's why I had to account for the adjustment and change that. When it's in vegetative stage, you want to be using two grams master blend, two grams calcium nitrate, and one gram Epsom salt. And when it's in flowering, like I mentioned earlier, you want to use the three grams master blend, three grams calcium nitrate, and two grams of Epsom salt. That works really well and it'll produce nice beautiful flowers all over the place and you'll have nice beautiful fruits growing. Now what, what I did was I had filled this up and I took the plant basically and I tried to like very carefully lift it up with one hand and with the second hand I was pulling the roots and holding the roots but that was so difficult I mean so difficult I mean look let me show you just a quick example of what the roots look like I mean it just and it, and it would just keep getting bigger I mean look look down there all the way to the bottom this thing is so huge it's basically almost the size of the container. The roots, I had to squeeze it by hand to get it back into the container. So this time, I'm just gonna come in here and top fill this back up from the side up and up to 1500 milliliters again. That's gonna be the easiest way for me to not damage anything. And I think the plant will be just fine. So I'm just going to wait for it to drink up basically everything in there. So probably by tonight, being that it drinks so fast, it drank that entire 1500 milliliters in one week. I'll, I'll fill it up probably later tonight back up. And these fruits should be ready for harvesting pretty soon. Cucumbers are actually, you could, you could eat at any stage. I've knocked off a few of these guys by mistake and eaten them. They were really delicious. The bigger it was, the tastier it got. I've had them when they were really a really tiny one when it first matured to a nice plump one that fell off by mistake just this morning when I came in here. So I mean, you're going to lose a few, but you're going to have so many growing, you won't even notice the difference. So if you like what you see here today or you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching.